14th. Last week, things began to trend in the right direction as the anticipation of stimulus checks started to boost consumer spending. Traffic will take time, though, to make a comeback as consumer preferences have shifted over the last year to favor delivery, curbside, and of course, mobile order and pay. But consumers continue to spend more per order, possibly because of that shift, with average growth in check up 8.5%. We are, of course, lapping the beginning of the pandemic when things started to take a turn within the industry, which still has a very long way to go, but got some welcome news in the latest stimulus package with the creation of the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. The $28.6 billion in aid is going to allow eligible businesses to receive a tax-free federal grant equal to the amount of pandemic-related revenue losses. Aid will be capped at $10 million, and the SBA is going to prioritize those grants for small businesses that are owned by women, vets, and the economically disadvantaged. This is in addition to the aid that's being distributed via the PPP. There's also a push to extend the PPP beyond March 31st. Looking at the restaurant stocks year-to-date, another interesting trend is starting to emerge. Many of the casual names are doing really well. In fact, they're for the most part the best performers of the year, Bloomin' Brands, Red Robin, Darden, BJ's Restaurants, and Brinker, all very much in the green year to date, perhaps on the expectations that there's going to be a lot of pent up demand this year. David, back over to you. Yep, a lot of potential demand. Kate, thank you. That is a great place to start with our next guest, whose restaurants are taking the opportunity to hire back staff previously laid off due to the pandemic. Joining us now is Xi'an Famous Food CEO and owner Jason Wang. Jason, uh, good to have you. Just Tell me, where do things stand right now for your business in terms of potentially coming back, so to speak? Sure. Thank you for having me, David. Um, our business has suffered greatly, unfortunately, through the pandemic. Uh, you know, in terms of coming back, uh, we were at 14 locations before the pandemic, and we shut everything down, and then we started reopening. Uh, now we're at eight locations in New York City, and, uh, you know, that's almost half of our locations mm -hmm. gone. So we still got a long way to go in terms of recovery. And in terms of sales, our sales are down probably 60, 70 percent. Uh, same stores between uh, comparing between 2020 and 2019. So it's still a long way uh, to recovery. But, you know, like you mentioned, with the uh, restaurant uh, relief funds and uh, the PPP, uh, those are our lifelines. Those are the things that are going to help us get back on track. And, uh, you know, we're hopeful, we're optimistic, but it's a long way to go. Yeah. Oh, give me a sense as to your expectations for that long way to go. Uh, we're at 50 percent or at least New York City is now at 50 percent dining capacity up from 25 recently. Do you see a roadway to sort of having all of your restaurants back open at some point in the future? Yeah, I mean, our restaurants are currently takeout only and th there are a few that are closed right now. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping that with higher capacity limit. Uh, allowed in New York City, we'll be able to safely reopen our indoor dining. Uh, you know, restaurants are about the hospitality experience. It's about the experience of eating in, interacting with our staff. Uh, that's what we're all about as well. So um, to have that, we really want to have 100% indoor dining in order to feel confident that, you know, people are, are it, that it's safe to do so. Once it's safe to do so, then we'll do it. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make up for some of the losses at that point. Um, but and hopefully we'll be able to reopen more locations or open new locations, uh, whatever the circumstances uh, are best fit for us at that point. Jason, I'm, I'm a big fan. Love those hand pulled noodles. Uh, so it's good to have you <laughs> on the you. show. I mean, one of the Thank things you, that Morgan. we watch so closely here at CNBC every Thursday is those weekly jobless claims. Um, there's been a lot of discussion and debate about how stubbornly high they've continued to be. Uh, and, and certainly one of the one of the things that's been floated out there, concepts that's been floated out there is that as you've seen reopenings and then closings and then reopenings again, that in some cases those claims are people that um, were let go or furloughed, came back to work, let go again. Just in terms of what you've seen with the ebb and flow of reopen reopenings in New York City, what has that process been like for you? How is it now affecting your rehiring efforts currently? Yes, I, I think unemployment is definitely still a big concern for our society um, because of the pandemic. For us, uh, you know, we we were just unable to hire back, you know, to offer enough positions, uh, the same no number of positions as we used to have, just because we're down so many stores. It's you know, um, uh, unfortunately, not possible to have 
that many positions. We just can't afford to. Um, so I think a lot of people are in the same boat at this time. A lot of restaurants, unfortunately, had to reopen, like you said, and then close down again. We had to close down one of our restaurants after reopening and actually probably more to go soon as well, just because, unfortunately, the economics just don't work. Um, at the same time, employees just feel unsafe still and reasonably so that um, to, to come back to work, especially those that are living with people with pre-existing conditions and the elderly. So, uh, you know, th those people are vulnerable. Yeah. And, and right now, it's just unfortunately the, the state of things. And we have to, you know, get to a place where we everyone's, you know, vaccinated and we have, you know, herd immunity. And at that point, that's when we will be comfortable and employment will fall. Yeah. I mean, employment, yeah. unemployment <laughs> gotcha. will fall. <laughs> um, Excuse me. <laughs> uh, just to quickly wrap this up, uh, food costs, we've seen a lot of prices jumping. How is that affecting you and what does that mean in terms of translation, translation to, to bills to consumers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's unfortunate. It's a squeeze right now. You know, uh, we have low demand for uh, for our products just because there are less people around New York City. There are less people eating, uh, dining out. And uh, uh, for us, we also have increased food costs. For example, our oxtails uh, are just through the roof. And among everything Ox else, tails. there's shortages of uh, things. It's not just about the price. So uh, and at the same time, I say it's a squeeze because we also had to raise our prices a little bit. Uh, we haven't done so in about four years, but we just did in order to, you know, make sure that we can still afford to pay our employees the same rate pre-COVID uh, as pre-COVID and also to try to cover as many of our costs as possible without owing people too much money. So uh, it's a squeeze and it's tough, uh, but I think that, you know, having a strong brand definitely helps with that. Mm -hmm. But it's unfortunately something that a lot of restaurants have to face these days. All right, Jason, thanks and good luck. That Thank does it for much. Squawk on the Street. You're not going to want to miss Squawk Alley this week, though. Tomorrow, new Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger joins the show for his first interview since taking over the chip giant. That will be a first on CNBC interview. Meantime, Squawk Alley starts right after this break.